we'll just get right into it. My name's Courtney. I work with Shelburne Farms and um, Vermont Feed, and I use she, her pronouns. I am our school programs coordinator, um, as well as a professional learning educator. And I am coming to you from Vermont um, and in Burlington specifically, which is also the uh, traditional unceded homelands of the Winooski Band of the Abenaki. And um, just excited about the spring weather and, um, and enjoying the dryness, though, even though I know we need some, some rain soon. But for now, I'm, I'm loving the sunshine. Miller, I work with the UVM Tarrant Institute for Innovative Education, um, as well as uh, being a professional affiliate with Shelburne Farms. Um, I am coming to you from the top of the Green Mountains in Ripton on the unceded and ancestral homelands of the Abenaki people as well. Courtney and I are super excited to be bringing today's program to you. We hope that you leave feeling like restored and um, maybe a little inspired. Um, before we jump in, um, we asked you to bring a journal and a pen or something to write on. So if you have that handy, we're going to use that in just a moment. And if not, you can go grab that right now. Um, it's better if you have something to write by hand with for what we're going to do, but whatever works for you will be the right thing. So we're going to get started. And the way we're going to open today, welcome those of you who just jumped on, we are going to jump right into um, a grounding practice and awareness practice here. Um, and for this, you're welcome to turn your camera off for this part if that would make you more comfortable. I'm gonna invite you to put your feet on the floor. I'm gonna invite you to lower your gaze or perhaps close your eyes and find your breath. You're going to notice your inhale and your exhale, notice the feeling of your body in your chair, your feet on the floor, your arms. Notice if you're holding any tension in your body, maybe in your jaw, and see if you can't relax it. And take a few deep intentional breaths here, in through your nose and out through your mouth. In and out. And be right here, right now. And I want you to ask yourself the question, how am I doing today? And just hold that question in your mind. Don't need to find words to answer it. Just when you hold that question, how am I doing today? Notice what you feel, what you sense, what you start thinking. How am I doing today? And then I want you to ask yourself, what's emerging in me today? Or what's melting in me today? What's emerging for me, in me, through me? And what's melting? And don't follow any of the thoughts too far. Let's come back to holding that question notice what else comes up. And now if you can bring your attention back to the breath, just observe it in its natural state. And let's take three more deep breaths together in and out, right here, right now, in, and out. And what we're gonna do right now is, um, I want you to grab the journal that you brought to you. 
And I want you to take a few minutes and free write. Um, you're going to write whatever comes to you, but you might want to write about how you're doing today and what might be emerging or melting in you or for you or through you. And we'll just take about three minutes for that now. So we're going to talk next. Um, we wanted to do some mapping with you. We wanted to think about, you know, this is the idea here is that we're waking up gently, we're being inspired by the rhythms of nature. And so in that journal that you brought, um, have that handy because we're gonna need that for this next piece. Um, what we thought we could do here is really map out what's happening in the natural world in each season, what's happening in our culture each season and what personal rhythms, patterns or routines we might have throughout the seasons. So just to get you an idea of what we're talking about, can you, in the chat, what's happening in the natural world right now? What are some things you're noticing here in April, in spring? The Cornwall Swamp is flooding and Swamp Road is probably closed. Um, yeah, we have water melting, we have daffodils, we have more energy, green grass, buds opening. And I'm starting to see the next prompt come in. What's happening in our culture right now? And I see the ski season is ending and I see college kids outside and I hear barbecues at the lake and short sleeves. People are outdoors. Spring break maybe. All right, you all have the idea. And then the, the last prompt for this is like, what's hap what, what are your personal, what are the things that shift for you seasonally? So what I want you to do um, is take it to your journal now and think about each of the four seasons. And I'm just gonna give you about three minutes here to brainstorm and then we're gonna pop these ideas onto a shared Jamboard. But think about, and maybe start with the season that you were born in so that we hopefully have a bit of um, spread around the calendar year. So what is happening in the natural world in your place right now? What is happening in our culture and what is hap happening in yourself in spring, in summer, in fall and in winter. And we'll just take a, a few minutes now. So for those of you who've never used a Jamboard before, it works like this, or at least the way we're gonna use it is like this. Over here on the left, there's these different tools you can use to write on the board. And we're gonna use the sticky note tool, which is the one that's about in the middle here. And when you click on that button, it's gonna bring up a sticky note for you. But we're gonna color code our sticky notes. So when you're writing something that's happening in the natural world, you're gonna pick a green color for your sticky note. Um, if it's happening in the cultural world, you're going to pick, pick pink. And if you're picking a personal, something personal for you, yellow. And if the colors are hard for you to see, don't worry about it. Just put them on any color. It doesn't really matter, but it might help us visually if we have um, some of them color coded already. And so you're going to go ahead and enter a few things. Um, this is the springboard. If you come up here to the top, you can go to the next frame. You'll see a board for the summer, one for the fall, and one for the winter. Um, and once again, um, I would like you to start with the season that you were born in, or maybe your favorite season, but let's just try to not all start in spring. And we're gonna take a few minutes here um, and just get these ideas up here. And then we're gonna talk uh, in small groups about what we see. Um, so welcome back. I know that was a pretty short 
conversation um, and Courtney and Jane and I had the conversation in the main room. Um, but what did you notice? What does that tell us? What does that mean for us and our students? And just feel free to unmute and share what you talked about. Our group talked a little bit about um, the way that in the wintertime, um, it can be easy to become kind of depressed with like seasonal depression and how spring can feel like a lightening of just like your emotions and um, how it can take like, the feelings of, of depression from winter and just make you feel a little bit better when it starts to like things start to get greener and start to hear birds and it's like brighter in the morning when you wake up and you're going to work and it, the days are longer like that. In my group we had the privilege of talking with somebody from British Columbia and so that was a, a pleasure to hear some of the weather and what what's going on out there they they still have snow but they have more sunlight hours yeah hi jane <laughs> hi tina one thing that courtney and i talked about when we tried this out was the what felt like a little bit of a misalignment between the holiday season and the frenetic activity and all the running around and what's happening outside which you know, feels more like the, the seasonal depression and the wanting to like kind of be on the couch and not move a lot and and just noticing that there's, it's not, you know, those two those two forces seem to be at, at odds with one another and had us wondering about how that might be impacting us. What else did you notice? Were, were there things that seemed in tune, things that seemed out of tune? I was just noticing that everything has a cycle, you know, each season has its cycle of uh, starting, rebirth, continuing, kind of um, winter's much more quiet, except for the holidays and all the hoopla, but everything, there's a cycle to everything. I, um, I agree with what you're saying about the holiday season, and I and I think too that teachers um, and just people in general, um, <clears throat> when we're thinking about our students and or our children, um, taking into consideration how the feel how the seasons affect our feelings and our energy levels um, and what our expectations are in the classroom um, is something to be considered and and finding a rhythm um, finding a rhythm that flows with the seasons um, is can be challenging, but also um, probably pretty empowering um, for everyone. Thanks, Jenna. That makes me think too about how I always, as a teacher, like September, the beginning of school is the new year. Like to me, it, it really is the beginning of a new cycle. And then so to have this other new year halfway through, um, there's definitely a rhythm that would have been a great thing to add to like what's the classroom culture the classroom rhythm and how does that match with with what's happening in ourselves and in, in the natural world and in our culture. Well, and even in some Anything earth, else that earth based religions that that look at um, the new year starting in like this time of year like April March and April so that's interesting too, how we culturally have made our new year at the beginning of, right in the middle of winter. <laughs> it's so interesting. Um, I'm hearing a lot of people um, experience seasonal depression, um, like during the winter time and then in spring, they're feeling better. I heard someone mention that. I have the opposite feeling. My favorite season is winter and I'm actually feeling really upset that I can't go out and ski. And I, it's, I know that I'm, an outlier in that, but I feel happy that I can start foraging, but I also feel very sad about the snow melting. Lexi, that totally resonates for me. I find that I'm so active in winter, like I wanna be out in the forest, out skiing and just be outside and then summer comes and it's hot and I just wanna lay down in the shade. Like, you know, so, while, while nature is flourishing and so busy, like I wanna slow down and in the winter, I just wanna be moving. Um, and it sounds like from the chat that we're not alone. A couple other things came up in the chat. Um, 
some, you know, wondering about, is this why we're so exhausted after the holiday season? And I, I wonder too, Courtney and I were talking about nature is kind of metaphorically depressed in the winter, like everything slowed down and withdrawn. And, and um, this winter, I kind of took a cue from that and was like, hey, this is maybe what I should be doing. And so I didn't feel badly about myself when I wanted to just, I mean, it's pretty easy in COVID to make your world really small and withdraw a little bit. But, you know, it made me start to think, should I be taking more cues from what's happening outside and not feeling like there's something wrong with me, but that this is a time of, of going inside and then now is the time to go back out. So really interesting to think about. This looks like there's a few more things in the, in the chat. Um, yes, some of, just like animals, some of us are active in winter and some are dormant from Courtney. That is very true. I'm an active and winter animal and nature is medicine. Um, all right, we are gonna transition over to a body break with Courtney in just a moment, but we wanted to give you like 60 seconds if you wanted to just write anything down that any new insights or thoughts um, in that journal, we wanted to give you to a minute to reflect and then Courtney's gonna, gonna take it over. So you can keep finishing up those thoughts and I'm just gonna invite you, um, we are going to be doing a little bit of uh, movement. So you can, this is designed to do from your chair, but you can also stand up. I'm gonna be standing. Um, so it's up to you, whatever you need at this point in the day, you are the best judge of that. Um, and also this is something that if you are working with students, whether it's indoors, outdoors, formally, informally, but just a quick little five minute body break um, that's gonna incorporate some movement and, um, you know, there's lots of research that shows this helps increase productivity, reduce stress, boost brain function, develop social skills. We sometimes forget that our brain is a part of our body and we do so much thinking and always in our brains, but we have to remember that our bodies are just as, just as important. And we'll get into our bodies a little bit more in just a moment. But um, again, so welcome you to stand up or sit down up to you. And Emily did some great breathing with us before. And normally I would start with some breathing, but Again, this is a quick little body break. So the breathing will come naturally. I, I encourage you to keep breathing <laughs> throughout this. It's very important. <laughs> All right. So everyone just take a deep breath in and a breath out. And then, then drop your chin to your chest. And as you inhale, roll it up to one side. And as you exhale, roll it back to the middle. And then inhale up to the other side and then back to the middle. And then one more time each side, inhale up and exhale back middle. And then inhale up to the other side and then come back to the middle. And then bring your arms right out right in front of you and then turn your palms away and bring them around. And if you can clasp them behind your back, awesome. If you don't have that um, shoulder mobility, that's okay. You can grab opposite elbows if that works for you too. Or if that doesn't work, you can also grab your shirt or something to kind of hold on to. If your hands are clasped, let's see if I can move my camera down so you can see me. We'll just take them over to one side, whatever side you want. So bring both of your clasp hands so your, your elbow on that side is kind of sticking out like a chicken wing. And then bring your head over to that same side that your hands are clasped towards. Feel that nice stretch, oh, all through your neck and shoulder, outside of the arm. Just take a nice deep breath here. And then bring it all back to center. So hands clasped, head back to the center and then bring it to the other side. So whichever side you were on, take it to the other side again. Our elbow comes out and then head will come down to that shoulder as much as you can and feeling that good stretch there. Mm, just quick little things you can do at your desk or with your kids or your students. And then unclasp your arms, let them hang by your side, kind of shake them out. And then inhale your arms up overhead, clasping your hands together. And I like to make a little steeple, my clasp hands, and then bring your shoulders up by your ears snug them up and then drop them down your back, creating a little space between your ears and your shoulders. And then whichever side you want to reach up tall and then come over to one side, stretching from your torso. 
Mm, nice big moon stretch. And then inhale back up to center. Bring those shoulders up by your ears again and then drop them down. And then over to the other side. Ah, uh, that feels so nice. Nice big stretch. And then come back to center. Um, and then if you're sitting down, that's good. If you're not sitting down, you can sit down. You're welcome to. But again, these can be done from standing up. But we're going to do a little bit of a cat cow. So if you're sitting, you're putting your knees, your hands on your, your knees or on your, on your thighs. And if you're standing, you're just going to kind of round with me. So hands on your on your thighs and then a cat um, or cow, we're gonna kind of pull, puff up our chest, bring our shoulders backwards, lift our head up to the ceiling as we inhale. And then as we exhale, round the belly, round the back, really push into those shoulder blades. See if you can push all of the air out of your belly. And then again, inhale, cow, puff out that chest, put the head back, nice deep breath in, let the belly be soft. And then exhale, round through that cat, that kind of Halloween cat, really pushing into that back. And then inhale, come back to center. Bring your arms out in front of you again. This is a fun one. This is, some of you might know, but it's eagle arms. So we're gonna take our right arm. Oops, let me do it. Let me, let me get it right. Right arm underneath our left arm, crossing at the elbows. And this is as far as you might get. That's totally fine. If you can, you can grab your thumb or your, your finger, or if you can even push your palms together, that's the best. I don't have a ton of shoulder mobility, but this is our eagle arm. So bring your elbows kind of away from your body. You should feel a nice stretch in the back between your shoulder blades. <laughs> the dog wants in on yoga. I tell you, every time I do yoga and I'm around an animal, they just want to be on me. It's the funniest thing. So um, from here, you can do little circles with your elbows. Again, moving, if you find a nice juicy spot that you wanna stay, feel free to stay there. And then move in the other direction too. And then swoosh your eagle arms out to the side and then do the other one. So left arm, wait, what did we just do? Yes, left arm comes under right elbow or right arm. Cross at those elbows, grab whatever you can. Bring the elbows away from your body. Again, getting that nice stretch in the back and then doing some little circles. Mm, don't forget to breathe. Great. And then swoosh your eagle arms out again. And then we'll just do a couple little twists. So whichever side you want to bring your, I'm gonna do left or twist to my, my right first. So my left hand's gonna come to the outside of my right thigh. And I'm gonna be like an owl from my torso up. So switch all, all the way around, twist all the way around as much as I can, including my head looking behind me. And then coming back to center and then switching over to the other side, owl to the other side, and then come back to center. And then the last one is just gonna be Yogi's Choice. So whichever, whatever you wanna do in this moment that you need, maybe you found a spot that you need a little extra extra love in, extra attention, whatever it is you want, just take a moment. If you do something on one side, make sure to do it on the other side. I'm gonna do a nice little quad stretch. It feels really good. And then switch sides if you haven't already. Whew. All right. All right. We got all kinds of pets. I love this. All right. Just a quick little break. Um, usually during the day, it's really important to have little body breaks. And sometimes it's the first thing that we take out um, when, when things are running behind, but it's so important to keep those up. Um, yoga and mindfulness are great tools to use in your classroom or with students. They're individualized so students can move at their own pace. Um, these are lifelong skill developments that students are using, so you don't need any equipment. Everyone benefits, especially the teacher, especially if you can get your, your class to be mindful about what they're doing. Um, and there's so many resources out there for, for yoga in the classroom and all that sort of stuff, but just keep it simple. And you know, if you do this enough, you can let the students start to decide what it is that they want to do. They can call the, they can make the little routines. I've had that with kids before. Um, 
Another thing is breathing buddies is what we used to use. I used to have this bag of um, beanie babies I used to bring around and the kids would lay on their backs and we'd put a, a beanie baby on all of their bellies and it would prompt them through letting, you know, make the baby beanie baby go up by breathing in and then make it go out by breathing out. And just, you'd be amazed at how much they look forward to this sort of thing. And um, also just the calmness that it brings and can and really calm, calm kids down. So just a quick little body break and then we'll move, move along here. Yes, breathing buddies, <laughs> they're the best. Um, okay, so in your journal, I'd like you to just, um, we're gonna think beyond our physical bodies here in just a moment. Um, but what I'm gonna have you do is write down a list of everything you can remember that you did today or yesterday, just a quick list. Here's some examples on here of um, some things that might have come up in your day. So be thinking about all of the different pieces. So just take a moment, um, give you about a minute or two. You can also include thoughts or feelings or anything like that that might have come up. You know, remember feeling a certain way or having a certain thought. So we were just working with our physical body just then. Not to say that um, it doesn't affect other parts of us because it does, but we're gonna talk a little bit about the four bodies, the, the four body theory. Um, and these are just like vibrational fields of energy that overlap and are interdependent. And they're always striving for this sense of homeostasis, just like nature wants everything to be in balance. So we are trying to constantly achieve this sense of balance. And these are just two depictions of um, the four bodies. So our four bodies being physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. And um, like I said, these are vibrational energies. I mean, we are made of energy. And some people feel like there are field, their actual energy fields, starting with our physical body being the closest to us, or here they call it the etheric body, um, followed by next out is our emotional body in this, in this next field, and then our mental body, and then our spiritual body. And there's actually seven seven bodies, um, seven auric fields, but we're going to start here to keep it simple. Um, but four is also a number that we see a lot in the natural world. So like we just did with the seasons, um, the different direct, there's four directions, there's four elements. So four is kind of an auspicious number when we start thinking about these sorts of things. So um, some people feel also that da Vinci's here, his Vitruvian man, as I'm sure a lot of us are familiar with this, um, is actually representing the four bodies. So the, the image is obviously of, of a physical um, a physical body. And then the multiple arms and legs kind of represent the dynamic emotional body. Um, the square around the outside is, is kind of speaking to the confines and the limits of the mental body. And then um, the circle around the outside being the spiritual field. But it's kind of this idea that everything is connected to everything else. We are nature. We sometimes forget that. We are natural beings that are part of this, this larger um, planet and world. And so it includes everything around us. We'll go on. So we'll, we're going to, these all work interdependently, but we're going to pull each one out and kind of look at them um, and talk about how can we get these in balance. So the physical body, as we started with, it's, it, as you think about it, it includes our skin and everything underneath it. So skeletal, fascial, organs, bloods, veins, ligaments, et cetera. Um, and we can usually tell when this is out of whack because we are like, I don't feel good or I'm bleeding out my arm or whatever it is. You know, we can, these are usually pretty visible signs. Um, our culture puts a lot of emphasis on our, on the, the physical body. Um, and, you know, I think lots of times this is the kind of the first thing that when someone asks me how I'm doing, the first thing is like, oh, well, my back's hurting these days or whatever. It is. You know, it's kind of like the first thing that we talk about. Um, when it's in balance, we feel really open and flexible. All of our vitamins and nutrients are all working together and everything's in check. Um, when it's out of balance, it can be kind of in two different ways for both of any of these that we go through. There's kind of the yin out of balance and then there's the yang out of balance. So when it's out of balance um, in the yin sense, it's there's maybe some early aging, some health problems, issues with absorption and elimination. Um, when it's out of balance in the yang sense, it, it's more of like this obsession with like fixing things that are, are not broke. So thinking about like surgeries or drugs or injections, things to like enhance our physical body because we might not have the right relationship or it might be out of balance. Um, ways to bring it into balance are 
feeling good in our body movement. So things like we just did, those little, those little body breaks helped us to do that. Movement, connection to being outside. Um, I know during the pandemic, when it first started, one of the things that people talked about was getting outside and being in a relationship and how that helped their emotional bodies that we'll talk about here, but also their physical bodies. So um, playfulness is really great and moving the body in a way that you can feel confident. Emotional body. So our emotional body is our next one out and it contains our nervous system, our hormones. It's kind of the bridge between our physical and mental. And it's where our experience of the world is synthesized and interpreted. So feelings and relationships to how things, to all things. So how we react and respond and interpret situations and, and outside energies. Um, particularly not anything factual. So this is a really, I'm feeling this. I feel this. I sense this. Um, there's a lot of likeness in the emotion body to water um, because it can be it's constantly dynamic and moving um, and also with our physical body um, this shows up in the sense of like hormones like cortisol insulin and just uh, progesterone and estrogen testosterone and same with like heart rate blood pressure but when it's um, in balance it's we're inclusive we're empathetic we're open um, when it's out of balance uh, it can be look like a lack of trust or interest in other people. Um, a lot of, we can tell when someone, you know, is really closed down emotionally. Um, it also can be like an inability to read the room because we're so deep in our own stuff that uh, our own sea of emotions that it's hard to, to see what other people might be feeling or, or holding on to. Um, on the other side of that, it can also look like aggressiveness or obsessiveness or irrationality, irritation. And the way that we bring our emotional body into balance is by anything that gets the stream running again. So it gets that water moving. So physical movement, maybe some detoxing, um, intimacy and touch. Um, also forgiveness, um, being able to forgive and allowing yourself to be forgiven. Um, so allowing emotions to flow without attachment. The mental body. So this is what it what it sounds like. So it's our thoughts, attitudes, judgments, prejudices, prejudices, how we perceive ourselves and others. Um, so all things intellectual, analytical thought, how we process information. Um, when it's in balance, we are proactive. We're problem solvers. We're concise. We are clear and in our um, our thoughts and our um, ways that we interact. So uh, yeah. And then when it's out of balance, it can look like brain fog, it can look like confusion and doubt, worrying, low self-esteem and worth. Um, or on the other extreme, it can be like narcissism and sociopathic sort of tendencies, um, little or no empathy for other folks, especially around career and achievement. Um, and it's kind of like somebody who's in overdrive all the time. Uh, we bring it into balance by, by vigorous exercise or movement. Um, I laugh at this one because my dad is like a classic um, mental body guy. He's always in his body and he's a um, Ironman and a, uh, <laughs> a triathlete, like an intense triathlete. And this is kind of how he works through his mental body stuff. So um, also like talk therapy is really good for folks who are constantly in their mental body. So it gives them um, like that emotional with someone who's emotionally intelligent and able to guide them um, to letting go of some of that emotion stuff that can get them out of their mental bodies too. So again, how that's interconnected. And last, um, which is kind of like the most personal, um, I think is the spiritual body. So this is the one that's connected to all things. So to the earth, to, to ourself and, and that connection, um, what we might call the God or the goddess, the universe and beyond the divine or higher self. So um, this provides protection and union and help and guidance. Um, also an ancestral connection here. Uh, it's the part of us that is connected to ourselves and everything. So like I said, it's very highly personal. Um, when it's in balance, we're very calm, we're intuitive, we're listening to ourselves, we know what we need, um, we're open and we're empathetic, uh, we can be very creative in this space too. Um, when it's out of balance, we get uh, disconnected, overly independent, we just think that we can do everything, we don't need anybody's help, we forget about community, um, acknowledging, uh, you know, kind of victim mentality sometimes can come up here or controlling or grasping um, 
Or on the other hand, it can look kind of like what we call spiritual bypassing, you know, out of touch with reality and like what, you know, love and light, too much love and light without being grounded in, in what's really happening. So like that toxic positivity, a, a lack of responsibility and entitlement. Um, and we bring it into balance by meditation, gratitude practice, breath work, um, connection to self and others. So bringing, you know, seeing our connection to how we relate to the rest of the world. All right. So what we're going to do is go back to that list that we made of all the things that we did today or yesterday. And we're going to kind of code it into this, um, this sort of graph here. Um, so you're going to categorize it. You can code it next to each one if you want. If you if you don't want to make this list, you, you're welcome. You don't have to do that. Um, I think it's something visual like this is really easy easy for me to be able to see where things might be in balance or out of balance. Um, things can exist in more than one place, right? Because it's all interconnected. If you want, you know, you, so you can put them in more than one place or you can choose which one it's more dominant. So like, you know, if I had road rage yesterday, I might put that under emotional, even though it could also be physical because I'm getting like super angry and mad and um, I can feel that in my body, but whatever it is that it's up to you. Um, so just take a moment to kind of categorize where your list fits into your four bodies. This is actually an activity that I've done with students. Uh, I was working with a high school group um, for a semester and we started, I gave them that same context that I just gave you all. And we did the same activity of thinking about um, what do they do during the day and looking at where does that, where, how does this fit into my four bodies? Um, and they're all gonna be individual because we're all different. And this is the same with all of our students that show up. They're all gonna have a different balance of where they're, they're you know, might be, exceeding in a phys in their physical body is doing great but the rest of their bodies are kind of out of touch um or not in balance and like i said you know nature is constantly trying to reach that homeostatic state of balance so that's why we might feel out of sorts lots of times we talk about feeling a little off or whatever it is these are partially why um yeah so, and then we, throughout the semester, we also made time to kind of check in again, you know, or we would use this as a check-in question of like, which body are you feeling, um, you know, needs the most attention right now? Or where are you really thriving? You know, which body are you really thriving in? And it's just that awareness um, and time to be able to be able to be more specific with their needs and be able to voice those sorts of things and see it for themselves. So I'm gonna pose the question to you of what do you notice? You can um, unmute yourself and speak out loud, or you're welcome to put it in the chat too. All right, now I'm really unmuting. I notice I do pretty well with taking care of most of my physical needs. And then some of the others like trickle in. Thanks for sharing that. What else are people noticing? I noticed that I have a lot of emotional and mental on mine and not a lot of physical for my list. It would be interesting probably to do this um, on a weekend and then on a weekday, right? Of like seeing where your bodies might be in, in flex. I'm thinking Alexi with your kindergartners, I can understand why you're in emotional and, <laughs> and uh, emotional and mental space all day. <laughs> seeing some things uh I need more sleep yes Fiona <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm finding that I spend like today it's mostly physical or mental tasks that I've done but I find myself wanting um I'm just not making enough time for the things even though I know I need more um spiritual or emotional time I'm not I don't make time for that during the day yeah. So what, why is this important to know or to have context for when we're thinking about working with our students or, or anyone else for that matter? I feel like, as we've mentioned earlier, like I have yoga in my practice in the classroom, but it's the last thing that happens, like the time crunch. I just took it off the list today. Today, I took it off the list. And I, that's important for me. And it's obviously important for my students as well. Mm. Yeah, I put work as sort of physical and mental, but 
kind of forgetting that we make a big emotional connection with the kids, with the students. So there is that piece, especially with the ones who need it. Mm. Yeah, thanks for uplifting that. And I find too, when I'm more uh, emotionally balanced that I reflect more. And then when I reflect more, I become a better educator. Mm. <laughs> more responsive educator. Thank you. I see here in the chat too, um, balancing yourself so you can help your students balance as well as they're learning how to identify those things in themselves. Yeah, I mean, I'm 42 and I'm still figuring out these things for myself. So like if we can help to have students start to think about these things early on, I mean, how amazing, you know, for them to be like, you know, I'm having a really emotional day today. My, my emotional body is very heavy today. I need to just, you know, go over here and, and breathe and sit down, you know, to be able to speak up for their needs is, is really exciting. So well, thank you all for participating in that. And I'm gonna turn it over to Emily here. Yeah, I I would totally echo what Courtney said. I'm I'm 45 and I'm learning about this and getting much better at figuring out which of my bodies needs attention and how to meet those needs and finding that it really pays off. Everything seems better um, when I can identify and meet my own needs. And I think that that's so valuable um, for our students to know. Um, so we wanted to invite you to think with us for a minute here about what classroom connections you see. Um, I know we have British Columbia and Ontario and Vermont and probably like other places represented here. Um, in Vermont, um, our state has put out some guidelines around COVID recovery, which many of us are wishing could be called COVID redesign and not recovery. But um, the things that are prioritized in that plan are social, emotional, and well-being, engagement, and academics. And just the fact that social, emotional, and well-being and, and engagement are actually the first two things in the plan, and academics comes third, I think speaks volumes. Um, but we're wondering how might the types of things that we did today, how might students benefit from these activities, and how could you see you using them in your setting with whoever your students are? I have a thought I'd like to share. I think by the teacher educator uh, role model in the classroom opening up about how important that these four bodies are, it helps the children understand like, oh, this is important. Like I'm gonna spend some time on it too. So I think it allows them to uh, understand the value that those four bodies and when they're balanced have on their entire lives. Which of these bodies are, are welcomed in schools and which aren't and, and why? I'm just having some thoughts from my day in the classroom. Um, and I would say that unfortunately the emotional body is not always welcomed with open arms in the classroom. And today I had a student who was very emotional coming back from recess and he was told, suck it up. You need, your job is to be in the circle right now. You need to be in the circle. And Oh, it just, it like, it hurts me. And, and at the same time, this is what is expected of them. And this is the way it goes, unfortunately. So before COVID in our classrooms at our little elementary school, we had calm spaces. Generally they had lots, some pillows, some sort of enclosure, all that stuff that's hard to maintain and make safe in COVID. So for the most part, they've been done away with and we are missing them because that was a place where a kid could go for a break or a bit of escape or to get themselves just right and make that choice for themselves, but still be in the classroom and under supervision. And on some level, perhaps listening to the lesson while they sort of pulled themselves together and we're missing that. Mm -hmm. When I was um, teaching first grade, I had something um, called silent and solo time immediately following lunch and recess. And we'd come back from recess and it would be quiet and they could color or look at books or just rest. Um, and the amount of time varied depending on the needs, but it also allowed, it allowed me to attend to any children who had any needs um, and help help them work through anything that may have happened at recess or lunch. And it gave everyone a chance to sort of um, settle in 
after all that excitement and after eating and get back in touch with themselves before we started our afternoon. I'm seeing a few comments in the chat too about mindfulness. Um, that's something that I did. Uh, in fact, it's a funny story. The, the reason I was introduced to mindfulness is my first year teaching middle school was so stressful that my doctor recommended the mindfulness-based stress reduction program. And my principal said, you can do that for PD, um, which was amazing. Um, and I ended up bringing the practice to, to use with students. Um, and you know, I think about most recently when I did it in Cornwall, um, we had sit spots and uh, so we were outside and I'm thinking about those four bodies and I think that, I don't remember Courtney what your slide said, but it seemed like nature time might hit all of them in some ways. Um, and so kids had a spot that they picked and it was their spot and we went out rain or shine or snow um, all year long and, and they did all sorts of different things in that spot, um, whatever, whatever they really wanted, but it was their spot. And um, I think about how our, our mental bodies, our intellectual bodies, uh, culturally are preferenced, privileged, and focused on. Um, we try to keep our messy emotional bodies to ourselves. We have, there's a lot of expectations on our physical bodies and our spiritual bodies are like non-existent in, in the world. And, um, uh, you know, I can't speak for you, but for me, they, they all ring really true for me. And it, I've been wondering about how to make space in the classroom for all of them in a way that is respectful and mindful of different situations, um, people's backgrounds and, and personal uh, family affiliations, but not to deny the existence because we can't agree on one thing. Um, and I, ha I did find that being outside was, was common ground, if you will. Um, and, and felt like a great way to nurture ourselves. Um, so those are a few of my thoughts on that. Um, I had one quick link here that I'm, I'll just sh tell you what this is briefly. And if you're interested, um, you can look at it later. It's called a suffering index or a suffering equation. And it's something I used with elementary and middle level students. And I learned it from um, the mindfulness coursework that I did, but basically, um, it's a math equation. And you have two, two scales of one to 10. And on, this, on the first scale of one to 10, there's the actual pain of something that happens to you in your life. And you can't change that, whether it's, it's a worksheet for homework on a sunny day, or whether it's a scraped knee, or whether it's a trauma in your family, like there's the actual pain of the thing that's fixed. But the other scale of one to 10 is your reaction. And so while you can't control the actual pain, you have a little more agency over your response to the thing. And so some things, you know, need, deserve a 10 in suffering, but some things like a scraped knee or some homework on a sunny day, if you resist them, you're pushing yourself up on the scale and you end up multiplying these two numbers together. So let's say the, the homework worksheet is a, a three on the absolute pain scale, it's a three but you don't do it for days and days and days and now you're missing recess or what have you that's happening. And so if you're resisting on a seven, your suffering is 21. But if you just get it done and finish it and stick it in your backpack, you're, maybe you're not resisting or you're just resisting it a little bit, grumbling while you do it. You're giving it a one and you multiply your three times your one and now your suffering is three. So it shows kids in a kind of concrete way how, how they respond to something that's upsetting can impact how much they suffer. Um, and it's also helpful with your own children, I will tell you from experience. Um, the suffering index is linked right here. This is just a Google Doc that I made um, when I taught it to my students um, and kind of explains how you, you can figure it out. And I found that that was a really concrete tool, <laughs> excuse me, to help kids think about it. And before we go, Courtney, you have a way to close us out here. Yeah, and I think we're a small enough group that we can do this speaking wise. Um, so I'm wondering what is an action step or an inspiration towards an action step that you have to putting your bodies in balance? So you could think about that for a moment. So an action step that you're gonna take or something you aspire to take action on um, to put your 
all of your four bodies in balance. So Kristen says, go for a walk. Um, I'm just going to call on someone and then they can call on the next person and we'll, we'll close this out. We got three minutes, so we'll keep it short, just nice and concise. Um, Julia, you're the next person next to me on my screen. So what's something that you're going to do and then call on the next person. I'm going to plant more gardens. Um, Tina. I am going to take more time to think about it. Um, Barbara. Oh, Courtney, thank you. I'm going to take more walks and spend more time in my gardens. And I will call on, geez Louise, I gotta go see who's here. Well, I know Fiona, Fiona, you're next. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm going to try to to put aside time to actually get exercise. Um, and Eugenia. I'm going to play more music. Sorry, um, Camille. I'm going to be more present and learn Vermont bird dialects. And I choose, uh, let's see, Jenna. I'm going to um, make time to do the things that feed my spiritual and emotional self. And let's see, Lexi. I am going to take some time for myself and put down my work and go outside. Josh. I am going to take deep breaths when I'm in transition. Uh, Renu, did I pronounce that correctly? Um, I'm going to, um, I'm a Sagittarius, so I'm surprised that I haven't been able to do this, but institute more play in my life and, um, take more opportunities to just play and have fun. Um, I'm not sure who else is Dolores. Did you get to go? No, I haven't gone yet. Um, I am going to be more aware of the four bodies and finding a good balance between the four. Um, now, Virginia, have you gone? There it is. Um, I am going to uh, try not to get quite so overcommitted so that um, I'm enjoying the things that I'm committing to a little bit more. If you haven't gone yet, you can raise your hand. I think we have a few more. So April, Emily, Jane, is it Jane? Yeah, I forgot to call on somebody. Okay, April, you're up. <laughs> um, I'm going to try to stick to my daily yoga commitment that I have slipped off of a little bit. So I wanna get back to that. Jane. I'm going to just try to walk outside more and also go see the lake. I think um, just Kristen, and she put in the chat that she was gonna go for a walk, go for some walks. So Emily, it looks like you. Oh, and Tina, sorry. Oh, she was thinking about it. That's right. Gonna listen to more, gonna listen more when she's outside. I love that. So Emily, it's all you, round us out here. Boy, I'm gonna um, put some boundaries around me and my phone. Uh, and see how, how that works out. Cause I think that's mostly mental body, but not in a good way. Yeah. Well, thank you all so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you being with us on this beautiful day. And we yeah. wish you balance <laughs> in all your four bodies, in all the four seasons. We wish you good balance. I'm gonna start saying that to people as my, my, my outro. <laughs> Great to see everybody. Reach out if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you.